What's up, YouTube? It's Coach Corey. So an update has just dropped for Brawl Stars, so I'm going to go over it really quick. Okay, so I have the patch notes in front of me. I'm going to go over that very quickly. And then at the end, I'm going to go over the balance changes and give you my thoughts on how that's going to affect each of the Brawlers and the new meta and what it's going to look like. All right, so let's just go through it really quick. So first off, tickets are now permanent, as I said that in an earlier video. So that's awesome. I'm glad they no longer expire. Now you can use them on whatever event you want. If you like one of the two events more than the other, and you can now just save it up and use it on that one. Okay, and then um, there's you can also gamble more or less tickets. So one, two, three, four, five. So the new ones are two, three, four. Everything else is the same. Additionally, you can now buy tickets from the shop with gems. So really quick, hold on, let me pause it. Okay, so the amount of uh, tickets you can buy is right here. There's three different amounts. There's you can buy six tickets for 10 gems, or you can buy 20 tickets for 30 gems, or you can buy 60 tickets for 80 gems. So this is actually an amazing deal because if you uh, think about it, if you think about how much gold you can get from each ticket, this is actually way more gold and you'll get way more boxes from 60 tickets than you will from 10 uh, boxes from the big box. So the same, they cost the same amount of gems, right? But here, I'll do the math for you. So let's pretend you get an average of 20 gold per ticket. And honestly, it could easily be way more than that. But let's pretend it's that just for simplicity. Um, you get 20 gold every ticket. You get 1,200 gold for those 80 gems. And that's 12 boxes. That's two more than you would get from big boxes. So that's even if you're a free-to-play player and you buy the 60 tickets worth of, or 60 gems worth of tickets, which is 60 tickets, and you get an average of 20 gold, whatever. You get 1,200 gold from that at least, around somewhere at that. So you're getting more boxes for your gems. Now that's awesome. Now if you have the coin doubler, you're getting 24 boxes. If you have the coin doubler and the coin booster, you're getting 36 boxes or more. So this is a very good deal for your gems. So this is a great addition as far as for freemium players who like spending a little bit but not that much and want to get the most value for your gems. It's now either this or the coin doubler. All right, let's go through the rest of the changes. So the coin booster has been removed from the game. This was already talked about in my last video. So instead of that, um, if you have your coin boosters, you keep them, as you might have noticed already. Um, and the coin doubler is now has double the drop rate um, in boxes. So that's good at least. Um, so some game room changes. You can now open brawl boxes while you're in game rooms. That is awesome. It's actually a really small good needed change. Before you can do that, it's kind of annoying you had to leave the game room. Now another good thing is when the game owner leaves the room, another player gets promoted to the owner instead of disbanding the room. This is actually really nice too, because sometimes you want it to leave to go check something like the leaderboards, or before you open your boxes, now you don't have to do that. But now you can leave if you need to, and then you can come back, check anything out, come back. So that's nice as well. Or if you had like a friendly battle showdown room, you know, you left it, disbanded the whole room, which is kind of annoying. A lot of people sometimes want to keep playing. All right, there's some UI changes as well. There's a new health and ammo bar style. Uh, it's not bad, it just makes it a little more visible for what's going on. There's also a new indicator added to the super button. So now, if your super is all the way charged, um, actually it doesn't matter if it's charged, but anytime you hit, your super like flashes. And this way, if your super is all the way charged, it's easier to tell when you get a hit. So that's definitely a good change. Before you couldn't really tell. A lot of quality small changes this update. Additionally, Joystick size is now properly scaled to whatever device you had. I guess before, like if you were on an iPad, it was usually a really small joystick. Um, now your profile page has your brawlers back on it. Yay, that was really annoying. I don't know why it wasn't there before. It was kind of like gray. Um, but now you can see your brawlers sorted by trophies, so that's great. Um, oh, also on the end screen, brawler trophies are added to that, so you can see the disparity between you and your opponent. I'm waiting. There's going to be some rage-inducing posts on Reddit about the disparity between some people's trophies. So we will see. This was interesting that it is before Global because I feel like matchmaking is hard to fix with a smaller pool pool size like this. Once it's global, they'll be able to do a lot more matchmaking fixes that make it way better. So we'll see how this goes. I'm sure there'll be some uh, people making posts on this. There were a bunch of bug fixes 
as well. So like the coin booster effect wasn't showing up when you got your rank up bonus. Um, there were some issues where characters would fly, like Daryl and Bull, if they used their super and got hit by Dynamite Super at the same time. That no longer happens. Uh, the boss fight Entex no longer has victory or defeat since there wasn't really a loss or defeat. It's just a better time or a worse time. So that's no longer there. It's just a time reward. Uh, for the game room friendly battles, uh, when you swap a team, if you're changing someone from one team to the other, um, it now unreadies everyone. So you can no longer do duplicate brawlers, which was kind of cool, but I didn't actually get to do that. But it does seem kind of cool. But oh, well, it's probably better that way. Uh, there was an issue where Daryl could get stuck on water. He can no longer do that. He doesn't get stuck. Daryl, a bunch of Daryl fixes. He doesn't get stuck inside walls anymore. There was an issue where he didn't get destroyed uh, if he was using his super while a goal was scored. That's now fixed. There was another mismatch between Daryl's super aiming line and the actual outcome. So that's fixed too. Okay, now let's get into some of the balance changes. So first up for the events. So star player is less likely to be awarded to a member of the losing team. This is definitely a good fix, right? If you lost, it's kind of hard to be an MVP. Let's be real. Um, star player is also now less likely to be awarded to someone who lost many stars in Bouncy. I think that's a great change or dropped a lot of gems. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that, but it's probably a good idea. I think that's good because, you know, as a gem carrier, you never want to die anyways. So... I think that's in the right area, the right direction you want to be going as far as who should be getting star player. There are also some changes to Nita's Bear, Jesse's Turret, and Pam's Healing Station. So now in boss fight, those guys all have less health. Just those supers. So um, they're not going to be as good as boss fight. I think that's good because honestly, it was almost like a two on five when you had those characters. Maybe not Pam, but Jesse and Nita sort of like a two on five. So I think that's good. It puts them more in par with the other brawlers. Now, Temple Ruins has had a map change, finally. So they were tweaked this a lot. Um, and essentially what they did is they just made it so on the ends, there's now, um, the wall is open for two tiles on both of the ends. So you can now, there's three ways you can go in and out of the spawn. So that's definitely an improvement. I think it'll be a lot harder for more double thrower to work as effectively but we'll see. So let me know you guys know what you think of the new map changes too. Also, GG Corral got a small tweak as well to make it more difficult for attackers. All right, let me know about you think about that too. Okay, now for the brawler balance changes. So El Primo, he got his health increased by 200. So scaled up with the 35% health buff as well. That's 270 health. Uh, so that's a pretty small change. Um, I think that's good though, honestly. You'll see that Bull got a buff as well. And both of these guys, honestly, I thought were pretty underpowered after the update. It seemed like the melee guys sort of got left behind in the dust. They just were no longer very good. So I'm good to see that these guys are getting some buffs. So also El Primo's star power duration. Uh, the burn duration was reduced from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. But the total damage was actually increased. So that's good. For El Primo, for that to even be useful, it had to be quicker damage. So we'll see if that's enough. I'm not quite sure. 150 damage a second, that's definitely not bad. Now over two seconds, it's much more relevant. It's closer to one punch. At three seconds, it's one punch worth of damage. So it's definitely better. Um, we'll see how it is. Bull, same health increase by 200. Um, also, his main attack damage increased from 400 to 440. So a 10% buff. This is definitely a good buff for Bull. Also, his star power now triggers at 50% instead of 30%. Wow, so Bull got a really big buff. This is a huge buff for Bull. I'm interested to see how good he is. 50% um, a good marker. I would have liked to see like a speed increase or something, but this is a unique super or unique star power. So we'll have to see how balanced it is. And uh, on maps where Bull is good, we'll have to see how good exactly he is, whether he's overpowered or if he's now just you know pretty good or very good. Okay, so Bo, Bo got a buff. I'm glad Bo got a buff. A lot of people think Bo's star power was is good, but honestly, it's not useful in very many places. Um, there's only a couple maps where there's a lot of bushes, and those bushes tend to get destroyed. So his star power vision is increased from five to six tiles. I'm all for it. Make him even better. Make it even more specific. That's okay. Brock, his star power damage got increased as well from 160 to 240. 
that's a great change. Uh, we'll see if it's enough. I think it's going to be very close to where it needs to be. Because it's sort of like, before it was sort of like it tickled you, honestly. I mean, like you get hit by it for like a second and you just avoid it. It was usually not too hard to avoid. Maybe sometimes it was hard to avoid. But, and then it didn't even do that much damage. So this is more relevant now. I'm still not sure it's going to be enough, but we'll see. Crow, Crow got some changes. So his super now charges more slowly. You essentially have to get um, another hit with one more dagger as opposed to before. So that's good. His super is very, very strong. So I think they did this instead of changing his super to being slower. Instead, they're making it so he gets it less often. I think that's fine for the most part. Um, and then also, his poison duration is reduced by one second, but the total damage remains the same. I really like this change. I've wanted this change for a while. This is a great change because what it does is it allows everyone to start healing up sooner. So that's, to me, Crow is sort of like a un, really unfun character to face because you get poisoned and then you're like, oh crap, well now I'm not healing for like another five to six seconds. Like, what am I supposed to do? Do I just like shoot up and like wait and see if I get hit? Do I hide behind cover for, you know, another eight seconds while I'm waiting for the poison to go away and then heal? So now you can start healing sooner. To me, that makes the game more fun. So I'm glad they did this. So Crow got a little bit of a nerf, but he was very strong. So I think it was needed. Also, uh, Colt. Colt's got a big nerf. So Colt, his reload time was reduced by a good amount. So Colt was... Easily one of the strongest brawlers in the game, and it was so easy to deal a ton of damage with him. He definitely needed a nerf. I think this is appropriate. These guys had a very, very, or not these guys, Colt had a very fast reload speed. Um, so I think that's a good change. And then Mortis, his star power, healing reduced from 1200 to 1000. He got a nerf, but honestly, it's not a very big one. It's honestly pretty small. It's so much healing, it's not a big deal. And towards the end of the game, you have so many uh, souls on the board that you're able to collect a bunch. And then also, a lot of times you might be collecting them when you're not even, uh, you don't even need that much healing. Maybe you're only like 500 or 200 health below. So this isn't a huge impact on Mortis. It's a small nerf, um, but I think it'll he'll be just fine. It's not a big deal. And then Nita, health increased by 200. So this is a big health buff for Nita because Nita's much or not much, it's just lower health than El Primo and Bull. So it's good to see Nita getting some love. And then also her healing effect increased from 180 to 200. Definitely good. It's sort of underpowered. You didn't get to utilize it, utilize it that much. So good to see Nita get a buff. Pam. Pam got a nerf. She really needed a nerf. Her healing was just too much. Her healing station uh, effect has been reduced from 400 to 360. So a 10% reduction in how fast the healing happens. So that is definitely good. It was a little ridiculous how much her healing is sometimes combined with her star power. There also was a bug where the healing station expired. Um, this happened in Robo Rumble. I think that was the only place where it happened where if you just healed up, it basically it ran out of healing is what it seemed like. So that no longer happens. Daryl got a health increase. Daryl got some buffs. His main attack shots are a little bit closer together. His star power now reduces damage from 70% to 80%. And then his super roll speed is slightly decreased from, uh, it's like 10%. Is it? Yeah, it's about 10%. So this is definitely a good change to Daryl. So he basically does, has more health. Hopefully should be easier to hit with his shots now. Um, we'll have to test that out, see exactly how much damage it is you can do with him now. And then his super rolls slower. So I think this is fine. It was a little ridiculous how fast it rolled before. So maybe now you can aim it a little better. I think that'll make for some better gameplay if you can aim his super a little easier. Poco has a totally new star power. So Poco's star power now heals allies for 200 health per hit. So this is pretty interesting. We'll have to see how this competes with Pam's star power. Um, you're going to have situations where maybe you can hit an enemy and heal a teammate. So that would be very useful. But then you might also have situations where you can only hit teammates and you have to decide whether to heal your teammates or hit an enemy. It's not a lot of healing. So I think you're always probably going to want to still hit the enemy. But if you can hit a teammate at the same time, then it's definitely worth it. So we'll have to see how useful this is exactly, but it's definitely way better than his old star power. Okay, Spike's star power got a nerf from 600 health per second to 500 health per second when standing in his super. This is good. He got a ton of healing in his star power. He's a little overpowered, 
So now it's a little more in line. He can't be as crazy with it, but he's still getting a lot of healing. So Tara got a buff for her star power. I don't really think she needed it, but it's not a big buff. Um, her The shadow that spawns, the health got increased from 1600 to 2000. So that thing died really fast in general. Anyways, so this is fine, I think. Um, it shouldn't be that big of a change. And then also, the companion no longer, or the shadow, no longer scales up in showdown. Um, so it's sort of like a give and take. So it's now worse in showdown. But that's probably for the best. And it makes sense because none of the other star powers scaled up in showdown. So I was a little uh, wondering about that. And then the last change is Ricochet. His star power has new visual effects, for one. And then the damage for his star power is reduced from 100 to 80. So this is a good change um, because he just did so much damage. And I think the ranged brawlers were just so strong in this meta. And now they're going to be a little less stronger. So hopefully we're going to see some more Daryls, some more El Primos, and some Bulls. And maybe some more Shelly's, Taras, and Nita's as well. So I think that's going to be the main impact of these changes. Is it's going to be a little bit less range. You're going to see before in Smash and Grab, you're seeing top players run like Pam and Colt and Ricochet. Now it's probably going to be something like Pam or Poco. Um, and there's going to be much more variety between the other two. So that's great. Okay, guys. So that is my balance changes or my update video. Sorry, it's a little late. I didn't know the update was coming today. But uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you later.